Alec Baldwin really just can't seem to stop talking. Viva Fry, Montreal litigator turned YouTuber, and this is Winnie the Westie. And it was barely two days ago I did a vlog to the effect that Alec Baldwin really just has to stop tweeting during this ongoing investigation following the accidental shooting on the set of Rust that he was behind the trigger for. In that vlog, I broke down three of Alec Baldwin's tweets, explaining how nothing he is going to say publicly is really going to help him, and it can only really hurt him. And I played a soundbite from the now famous Pot Brothers at Law as to their advice when the police ask you a question, and their advice is as follows. You need to shut the f up. But if Alec Baldwin is not inclined to listen to the Pot Brothers at Law, maybe he'll listen to Julianne Moore from Magnolia because she has the same advice. Shut the f*** up, shut the f*** up, up! Now you must really shut the f*** up now, please, shut the f*** up. Now there are a great many people out there who loathe Alec Baldwin, who loathed him even before this event, and who don't mind seeing him going down, so him continuing to make public statements, tweets that will be used against him, it doesn't bother people very much, and they want him to keep going on doing it, and that is exactly what he did. I think it was yesterday, he pulled over on the side of a highway in Vermont, for whatever the reason, to answer some questions from some news outlet, I think it was Fox News, and after saying that he can't make any public comments... I'm not allowed to make any comments, because it's an ongoing investigation. Because there's an ongoing investigation, he proceeds to publicly comment for over three minutes. A lot of armchair keyboard psychiatrists out there on the internet might be tempted to call Alec Baldwin a malignant narcissist, and one of the traits of a malignant narcissist is that they think they're going to be able to convince anyone of anything because they're so darn charismatic, and if people don't believe them, they have to be idiots, and a lot of people watching this video might actually think that this confirms that Alec Baldwin could possibly be a malignant narcissist. While I appreciate that that is one of the possibilities, I tend to look at this and see a man literally having a breakdown in real time out there trying to convince not just the general public of his innocence, but his own being of his own innocence by portraying it as an accident to which he was merely a passive observer. But to quote the classic line from Point Break, opinions are like buttholes, everybody's got one, and I'm not here trying to rub mine in your face. Watching this video, I can definitely see an element of the narcissism, Alec Baldwin thinking he is just smarter than everybody else, and that everyone else has to believe everything he is saying. I can also see someone who is having an absolute breakdown and trying to convince themselves that they are absolutely innocent in this. But Alec Baldwin's near three and a half minute performance here because that's what it also seemed to be a performance just confirms the wise old advice just don't say anything when there's an investigation going on because nothing you're going to say is going to help you. Alec what's the current state of what's going on with the case? In I'm not allowed to make any comments because it's an ongoing investigation. I've been ordered by the sheriff's department in Santa Fe. I can't answer any questions about the investigation. I can't. Okay. It's an active investigation in terms of a woman died. She was my friend. She was my friend. Here is where some people might see the narcissism. The interview should have just stopped here. I'm sorry, I can't answer any questions, I just can't. But Alec Baldwin, being who he is, then proceeds to go on and give a lot more additional information in a manner that seems rehearsed, to say the least. And when I say rehearsed here, I don't mean rehearsed as in he rehearsed an answer to questions that he didn't even know were coming. I mean rehearsed as in it clearly looks like he is giving a performance here. It's an active investigation in terms of a woman dying. She was my friend. She was my friend. The day I arrived in Santa Fe to start shooting, I took her to dinner. Now, although I make videos talking about behavior and body language and interpreting what people say, I do not consider myself to be anything of an expert, so take it for what it's worth. I've read a few books recently, one of which was Never Split the Difference by Chris Voss, the other was The Six Minute X-Ray by Chase Hughes, and I've read a couple of other books on body language, The Psychopath Test by Ron Johnson. So I think I can identify a little bit of behavior in this, and having practiced law for over 13 years, that also gives me some meaningful experience in this. But I don't consider myself to be an expert, I just trust my own judgment, and here, getting into the answer that Alec Baldwin is giving here, he is clearly getting into the too much information part of an answer, which leads me to believe that he's being somewhat deceptive, if not to others, at least to himself. And for those of you who may not know, the woman walking around with the camera recording the whole thing is Alec Baldwin's wife, and she walks up to Alec Baldwin and shakes her head and says, Alec, you're going into too much detail right now, and he lashes out at her and continues to go on with his answer because he thinks he's going to convince people. We were a very, very Excuse me. We were a very, very, you know, well-oiled crew shooting a film together, and then this horrible event happened. Now, I've been told multiple times 
don't make any comments about the ongoing investigation, and I can't. But here, Alec gets into the too much detail in the answer to a question, which leads me to believe that he's not necessarily being deceptive per se. It's just that like a child, he feels backed into a corner and he wants to try to skate out of this situation. And by skate out of this, I don't mean the interview on a roadside in Vermont. I mean the situation at large. Alec Baldwin just wants to talk his way into innocence, talk his way out of the situation, despite the fact that he was quite literally the person who pulled the trigger. You know, well-oiled crew, shooting a film together, and then this horrible event happened. Alec Baldwin says that they were a well-oiled crew, which might not be the best analogy under the circumstances, and then proceeds again to describe it in purely passive terms. And then this horrible thing happened. It just happened. It's not that he was a player in it, it just happened to him. This is the detachment from the situation that allows Alec Baldwin to separate himself from the tragedy and separate his own responsibility from the tragedy. And this next part is what I feel to be among the most revealing and most manipulative aspects of Alec Baldwin's answers here. Sorry, what are the questions that you have other than that? You met with the, uh, the, the, the um, I'm afraid I forget her name at the moment, but you met with her family? Uh, in the Helena. Day. Yes, her I name met is with her Helena. If you're spending this much time waiting for us, you should you know, know her, her name. name. Her name is Helena. Helena Hutchins. I met with her husband, Matthew, and her son. Yeah, that's right. And uh, how did that meeting go? Uh, I wouldn't know how to characterize that. Here, Alec Baldwin says you don't know her name, and then he snickers as though to try to mock and make the reporter feel bad for having momentarily forgotten her name. And this I can see as being the manipulative behavior of a narcissist, in that Alec Baldwin is the one who pulled the trigger and ended this person's life, and he's trying to make the reporter feel guilty, feel ashamed for having momentarily forgotten her name. Again, it is the transfer of responsibility from the guilty person to someone totally unrelated, the manipulative behavior you would probably get with a malignant narcissist, and it does not make Alec Baldwin look good at all. This is the man who pulled the trigger that ended her life and he is trying to make a reporter look bad for having forgotten her name. What else do you have? Would you ever work on another film set that involves uh, firearms of that nature? I couldn't answer that question. I, I, I really don't have any. I have no sense of that at all. I do know that an ongoing effort to limit the use of firearms in on film sets is something I'm extremely interested in. Yeah. What a peculiar way of phrasing that. I do know that limiting firearms on Hollywood sets is something I am interested in. So he's basically saying, I do know what I am interested in. Again, it's a way of detaching himself from the situation, but also the fact that he's saying, I'm interested now in limiting the use of firearms on set after having quite literally pulled the trigger of a firearm ending someone's life on set. Again, a way of separating himself from the situation and making himself look like the victim in all of this by saying, now, look, I'm the victim of the circumstances and I want to change those circumstances. How many bullets have been fired in films and TV shows in the last 75 years? This is America. How many bullets have gone off in movies and on TV sets before? I've got to say, I find that insertion of This Is America to be a little peculiar and a little out of place, but this is where I think Alec Baldwin says the most damning and incriminating thing of this entire roadside interview. This is America. How many bullets have gone off in movies and on TV sets before? How many billions in the last 75 years? And nearly all of it without incident. I would be very surprised if billions of rounds have gone off on Hollywood movie sets, but let's just understand the point Alec Baldwin is trying to make, and it's not a point that's going to help him. It happens a lot. People use firearms all the time on Hollywood sets. They use real firearms on Hollywood sets, and they sometimes use real bullets on Hollywood sets, and Alec Baldwin knows this, and he has direct and meaningful experience with this. Alec Baldwin just admitted to this extensive experience in no uncertain terms, so how is he now going to pretend to be the innocent babe in the woods when it comes to him having pulled the trigger on what he knew to be a real firearm. Again, when it comes to the whole no comment thing, it's because less is more, and the more you say, the more likely you're going to say something that's going to come back to haunt you. And Alec Baldwin tries to undo this mistake in this very interview by saying later on that he's not an expert, but one thing is clear, he has a lot of experience with real firearms and real bullets on Hollywood sets, such that maybe pulling the trigger on this firearm might be inexcusable from his perspective. So what has to happen now is we have to realize that when it does go wrong, and it's this horrible, catastrophic thing. Some new measures have to take place. Rubber guns, plastic guns, no live, no real armaments on set. That's not for me to decide. It's urgent. It's urgent that you understand I'm not an expert in this field. 
So whatever other people decide is the best way to go in terms of protecting people's safety on film sets, I'm all in favor of and I will cooperate that, with that in any way that I can. Again, more dissociation from the situation, more dissociation of his own responsibility from the situation. Whatever people tell him to do, whatever the experts tell him to do, that's what he will do because he is not responsible for anything that happened here because he's not an expert even though he has worked with firearms extensively on movie sets. But he is cooperating, he is a mere passive actor in everything that happened. He didn't do anything, it just happened all around him and he will do whatever the experts say in order to make sure that it never happens again. Was there anything else? Why Vermont? Uh, because that, that's we a just no, 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 that's private. a person, that's private, yeah, that's private. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Mm -hmm. So just do me a favor, you know what? My kids are in the car crying. Because you guys are following well, me. No, I want to do, know. as a courtesy to you, I came to talk to you. I'm not allowed to comment on the investigation. I talk to the cops every day. And then Alec Baldwin ends the interview with yet a little more manipulation, telling the reporters that his kids are in the car crying and suggesting it's the reporter's fault for the fact that his kids are in the car crying and not the fact that he decided to pull over on the side of a highway to answer questions, but nothing that happened in this situation is Alec Baldwin's fault. Alec Baldwin is a mere victim of all of it. He's a victim of the circumstances. He's a victim of the situation. And now here he is the victim of the report. Call it malignant narcissism, call it cluster B personality, call it someone having a public breakdown after an absolutely traumatizing event. The outcome is the same. Alec Baldwin, stop tweeting and stop giving public statements. And for everyone out there who wants to see Alec Baldwin go down, he has just given them chapter two in more public statements that will not do anything to help him in this circumstance. And with that said, if you like my videos, you like my content, please be sure to like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and drop a comment in the comment section below because it feeds the algorithm. Tina, you fat lard, come get some dinner. If you want to support the channel. All of the support links are in the pinned comment. Robert Barnes and I do weekly streams every Sunday. We do weekly streams with a guest every Wednesday called The Sidebar. If you want to find us and support us on Locals, you can find us at BeavaBarnesLaw.Locals.com. All of my content is also on Rumble, so you can catch it there. But more important than anything, take care of yourselves, check in on friends and family, make sure everyone around you is doing well. And now you know your vlog. Peace out. Booyah! Did you just burp?